Bienvenue, everyone, and welcome to the Canadian Museum of History, a museum located on the Ottawa River in Gatineau, or Hull, Quebec, as the small section of Gatineau that this area is actually, it's an island that we're on, but that's besides the point. We're at the Canadian History, or Canadian Museum of History. I cannot think of a Canadian-built uh, public work that has fascinated me more than this particular building. It's taken a while for me to get out here as the building actually opened around the early 90s. You can see what I mean about the fascinating or very unique architecture of this building. It is well known and in the background you can see even more of Ottawa's brilliant classic architecture including of course Parliament Hill up in the distance. But that's not the reason why we're here. We're here to actually go inside and experience the museum for the first time, including its great hall, which I'm much looking forward to seeing for the first time. We have two different museums here. One is essentially a children's museum. Another is the history of Canada. We're gonna go inside. We're gonna find out what it's all about. Just wanna say hello to the staff that were very friendly in welcoming us for our visit today. As mentioned, there is a children's museum. Uh, I'm not entirely sure that we'll be able to get enough time to do that justice, but uh, if we do, we'll tour it at the end of our tour here. This is actually an IMAX cinema. This is the first time I've been able to see a full IMAX setup. I did one time get close to an IMAX projector briefly for film class, but this is very cool because IMAX is a significant part of Canadian history and thus it's justified that it's actually in see the large crane that moves the, mach the projector into place we might need to come back and check out the film the last one's at 4.30 Clearly the most stunning aspect of this building is the lack of straight lines throughout its design. It is designed by Canada's foremost and most famous native people's architect. We haven't even gone in the museum yet and there's just so much to, to marvel at here. It's just amazing architecture. What's going to happen is we're going to go to the top, which is the third floor, and experience modern Canada first. So we're going to go in reverse of how this is actually constructed for you to see. So that way we can end at the Great Hall you see below. All right, so here we are, Modern Canada, level four. You see that this great hall roof experience just continues through it. the entire building from what it looks like. You can't get more Canada today than that. Pins. So we have some World Trade Center references. Definitely check out my New York State Museum vlog 
that was shot yesterday. An excellent, excellent museum in its own right. But essentially, there will be a lot more modern artifacts in this floor, but some of them are really triggers and mementos from my childhood, including a UNICEF box, which was really your first indication that Halloween was on the horizon. It's an official row from Louise Arbor. Any Canadian law fans will know that the Charters of Rights and Freedoms for Canada was created only in 1982 as part of the Constitution Act of 1982. It looks like this is one of the typewriters of which it was actually wrote or writ, sorry. If you take first year law, you have to know <laughs> this document pretty much. An election box, of course. Canada has a very complicated history with integration of all cultures and peoples. Thus the voting rights for many were not awarded until, to be honest, shortly before my birth. Considering that we're in Quebec, a fascinating aspect of history that you may not know is the Anglo history in Montreal. Is this subject too large for me to cover in this brief vlog? The 1995 referendum, which I absolutely remember, it was a a red and blue situation that captivated the nation at the time and created its own polarization of thoughts and, u and uh, uniformity. And by far my favorite prime minister and probably will never be contested was this man in puppet form. I long for the day I might meet the man himself. It would have been fascinating, obviously, to see what would have happened if they had been successful in separating, i.e. this museum would probably have to be moved, <laughs> as it's in Quebec. Because there was an earlier movement for separatism, which was in literally a few... I'm not going to tell you when my birthday is, but uh, it's pretty close. And uh, the referendum of May 20th, 1980, led, of course, by René Lévesque. We were really into that wartime rustic voting box, eh? Ooh, I just got Canadian there, eh? It's a very complicated history, as many people are not fans of the man who prevented the separation in the 80s, but he also was responsible for our Charter of Rights and Freedoms, countless amounts of public works that brought the country into a modern place and sort of solidified its place in the G7. That is, of course, Pierre Trudeau. Even in Canadian history, the October crisis of 1970 is not necessarily addressed. It was a significant crisis at the time in Quebec, especially in Montreal. And what you see here is a bomb disposal suit and also a bomb disposal remote control unit. There's a lot to discuss about this subject that I obviously as well will not discuss. Our Pierre Laporte was found in the back of a trunk. And then, of course, you have Charles de Gaulle, which, if anyone knows the history of Expo, during his visit in 1967 in this colorized video, 
he proclaimed, Vive le Québec! Long live a free Quebec. It really kind of, just even that moment, kind of brings chills. Nationalism is an important aspect of all nations. And obviously we have a complicated history with it here in Quebec. James Bay is a very famous, massive hydroelectric project. Quebec features a few of these, some of which I hope to actually visit in the near future. You can see the difficulty in actually doing so, considering how far these plants actually are. But I still do hope one day to get all the way out there. It seems like there's no clear sight of the end of my Quebec travels for this channel so stay tuned it may happen it's a brilliant we love public works we love vast large pieces of public architecture and this is definitely one of Canada's finest the native peoples section of the exhibit the Supreme Court which we hope to actually visit next another aspect of covering Canadian history and also Canadian law if you do study it would be our history with the residential school system which is only recently being addressed or has been addressed in the last couple of decades as far as to create some resolution for the crimes of the past and essentially a program to ethnically eradicate native peoples from this country as far as their views and traditions and practices are concerned. As we're still on the fourth floor exploring this modern history of Canada and we get closer to my own childhood memories of understanding where my country or what my country was all about the blue blocks the boo boo the boo I can't even say it the blue Box initiative, which still is alive to today. Any Canadian that grew up, say from the 1970s and onwards, would know of this particular animated classic. Definitely check out the history of the Wilderness Adventure Ride at Ontario Place video, where I pay homage to that very cartoon. Another subject that probably needs to be paid homage to in a significant part of my childhood. Bob and Doug McKenzie versus Terry Fox and his Marathon of Hope, which we're just about to get into the season of. I believe this will be the 44th, sorry, it'll be the 43rd edition of the Marathon of Hope this year, coming this September. And then finally, we have the signing of the Constitution Act itself, giving Canada its full sovereignty or semi sovereignty from British rule, as we still require royal assent for any bills that are passed in government. Many may not know, but the Canadian flag actually dates from 1967. It is not a flag that we've had for much time. And as you see in this fascinating exhibit, the variations of design that the country voted on and then the final design this is the handmade flag and one of the originals you may recognize this music in the background as the Expo 67 National Film Board film plays why? because Expo 67 is a major point of discussion on this channel and we have some original Expo 67 artifacts here to enjoy I mean this stereo cabinet with its very unusual speakers Claritone
you can see all the like different inputs really just set so ahead of its time at the time of course this is the a model of the original native people's pavilion at expo 67 as well which unfortunately is no longer with us One of the biggest things that any American that meets a Canadian will always bring up is what this gentleman brought to the country, which is nationalized health care. Unfortunately, there's just not enough time, so I'm going to have to hustle through the last of this fourth floor and get myself down to this floor below us. A little bit of a taste of some of the exhibits that we are not really covering along the way, including the history of warfare, which really one must be honest, there is no shortage of museums for. Group of seven, again, Canadian art history. You have to know these paintings. If you don't, you didn't pay attention in class. Of course, don't ask me to name the artists because, uh, yeah, I can only name three of them off the top of my head now. Of course, have the Great War history as well protesters in Winnipeg. This will be the hub or Carrefour. I always thought that Carrefour meant four corners or intersection. It's all the same, I guess. You still take in some of the fascinating designs of this building. It's fast. I don't even know where that is. I believe that's the main floor. It must be because the children's museum is right there. And now we go for a journey into Canada's history as a nation with Britain. Sadly, even though it fascinates me, this is the area of Canadian history that I'm sure most people will consider not as interesting. Although the War of 1812 and other aspects of local Canadian history lore are not lost upon us. And that is an original 1812 jacket. Definitely check out the history of Leviathan if you want to see that jacket in action. We have some settlers clothing from what it here on Wendat clothing actually so this is actually native native people's clothing from the 1700s God fave the king Of his history of English settlers in Canada. This would be another reminiscent exhibit of the history of lumber and timber. The sandwich was the original name of Windsor. That's fascinating. Berlin was Kitchener, which makes sense given the German community there. Toronto, as I do know, was known as York back in the day. In fact, there's still an area of the town. I hail, as a matter of fact, from North York, or that's where I was born. Bytown, as anyone knows that's watched my Ottawa vlogs, is the original name of Ottawa. Again, as I mentioned, sadly, due to timing, we're going to have to kind of go quickly through some of these exhibits. That way we don't sell, leave ourselves struggling when we reach the main gallery. Confederation is of course probably the most important area of this museum. 
as it led to Canada becoming a nation. Spearheaded, of course, by the gentleman you see here. Other famous characters that are local to myself, George Brown, and of course, Georges Etienne Cartier. Not Jacques Cartier, not the bridge that we crossed last night. Having seen fireworks in Montreal last night, we might need to go to Ottawa on Canada Day next year to see that display. This is, of course, the original Parliament building before the fire. As you can tell by the tower itself. I will confess I'll probably be coming back to this museum on a separate visit just to take everything in as I would love to look more into the history of these artifacts that they have here. going to hustle through this area as we get even further into the past as Canada suddenly starts to disappear as a nation as we go backwards in time. As you can see Canada is shrinking now as Rupert's Land was the original area to one side. It was really a fragmented nation only 200 years ago. Not even a nation, as a matter of fact. Just a claimed territory at that time. This illustration depicts the capture and killing of Thomas Scott, one of many conspirators led by the Louis Riel movement at the time. For rights for Métis, unfortunately it did not end well. This is Louis Riel here. We still have a house to go through, among other fascinating aspects of this display. So we're going to try our best. We still have another floor to explore. The, the history of the Canadian Railroad. I will say, if there's one thing that most people come to this country to experience, it is our Pacific Railway through BC and Alberta. I have met many people, including some fans of the channel that have gone on that journey. I obviously hope to one day too. We're actually nearing the end of this floor's exhibits, paranoid as I am, so I'm gonna slow down a bit and just capture as much as I can. The city of Winnipeg. I misspoke as clearly there is another gallery on this floor and I can't stop, unfortunately, to give you what it's all about. So we're just gonna walk through the origins and native people's history of Canada. You call this a post prehistory section. It's 
faces follow you as you walk by, which is kind of cool. Correct me if I'm wrong, but this might be one of the most or it might be one of the largest collections of native people's artifacts that the nation has to offer. As the history of Canada obviously at this time was being determined by both French and English settlers. Regretfully, we have 20 minutes now left, so we have to get on our way downstairs. This has to be one of the most impressive displays I've seen. This building is remarkable. All right, we're headed down here for our final gallery. It is also much larger than I thought. And this is just one building. I still would love to know what they do with the other. We're gonna quickly go through the first people's hall and then we'll come back Forgive me for not affording the time necessary to give a full scope of everything that's going on in this very complicated, complex, and condensed and vast exhibits of Canadian history. This is easily a museum that you could spend a couple of days in just to take it all in with the theaters and with as much fascinating history as there is to discover here. And as you can see, it keeps going. In fact, we're going to have to skip a room. The Bluefish Caves. I'm just quickly going to get a shot of this continuous room highlighting Arctic whalers. I honestly, this is the most interesting or one of the more interesting exhibits that we've encountered, but I only have 10 minutes time to finish off with the Great Hall. The Great Hall, really what would be considered the masterpiece of this building. Again, I'm getting goosebumps for the second time in this exhibit. 
There's a very cool, immersive section here. Part of the reason why this section is so vast is, of course, to fit in these totems from the Pacific Coast. For those of you that don't know, this area is also used, or this room is also used for many purposes, including political debates, which some may recognize it from. We have six minutes left. Left. I have just enough time to go up on this promenade and show you some of these exhibits closely before we head up the escalator and out of the exhibit. We've covered most of the museum, I will say. However, there is a few exhibits even hidden in this promenade that we unfortunately haven't checked out. See, I'm not entirely sure if there is anything inside these. There is. Oh my, it just keeps going, doesn't it? Yeah. We have the reconstructions, essentially, that you just saw of original houses for native settlers originally. And that is it. Like I said, I didn't get everything as there are further exhibits inside these houses that we weren't able to capture. But you always, always, always leave yourself a reason to come back, correct? Correct. Just to solve this dilemma for what exactly the other building, which from its exterior is more recognized, this is the curatorial building. So yeah, that's where they build all of those exhibits that you just saw in this remarkable museum. That is all that we can unfortunately cover in this brief tour of the Canadian Museum of History, which is far more remarkable than I thought it would be. As I said through the vlog, there's definitely more than a day's worth of activity in that building and history to actually absorb. Uh, so I definitely hope that I can come back in the near future. I won't do a vlog and take it all in. But for now, I hope you enjoyed what I was able to capture. And uh, yeah, you should get down here. If you're in the Ottawa area and you're a fan of museums, it was $25 all in to get inside and well worth it. All right guys, thanks for dropping in.